everyone, and welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. That's the Hall of Famer, Chris Carter. This right here is Nick Wright. Great weekend of basketball. Great week, sort of a great weekend of golf. Yeah. If you're a Kepka mm -hmm. fan. Uh, big Monday show for you today. There could be a hiccup when it comes to KD and Kyrie teaming up. We'll tell you about that. The Warriors, they took a commanding lead over the Blazers. We got to start with last night's game in the East. Raptors taking on the Bucks in game three. All of the Raptors this time. Kawhi Leonard finally getting that help. He's been hearing about all postseason long. Kawhi, though, leading the team to a double overtime win, scoring 36 points in a game high and a career high 52 minutes of play on a bad leg, which he brushed off after the game. 118-112 was your final. It was a tough night for Giannis Antetokounmpo. He had just 12 points on 5 of 16 shooting. He did have 23 boards, though, and his Bucks do still lead the series two games to one. See, I'll start with you, and let's start in Toronto. How impressive was Kawhi last night? Well, very impressive. Not only the minutes that you talked about, but making key buckets. I think the most impressive thing of everything that he might have done, besides being, because early in the game, he looked like he tweaked his leg a little bit, yeah. you know, to play those types of minutes. But those minutes that he played on Giannis, to be able to take those minutes off of Serge Ibaka and Siakam, that they didn't have to play him. And it was a totally different style. He's undersized. The shortest guy that's probably guarded Giannis in this playoff in the first um, three rounds of it. And he gave Giannis some problems. He, kinda, he could anticipate where Giannis was going to go first. So he would get to that spot and then try to make Giannis either pick up the ball or spin back into him. And what he would do was he would try to get Giannis before. A lot like Andre Iguodala does. Old school basketball players, as you bring the ball up to shoot it, that's where they try to defend you the hardest compared to defending you at the top of your jump. Very, very successful. And you can't stop Giannis without your teammates. So them being completely engaged of what's the game plan, we're gonna help Kawhi when we have to, and we're not gonna give Giannis anything easy. We don't mind if he goes to the free throw line. We're gonna foul him, we're gonna foul him hard, we're gonna foul him often, very, very successful. That's what kept Toronto in this game, and they were able to get enough offense at the end with Kawhi in that double overtime, where he was probably the most productive offensively to be able to close him out. Very impressed with what way Kawhi played to be able to save their season in game number three. Yeah, Kawhi was outstanding on both Ends, much like he was the last time their season was on the line, game seven against the Philadelphia 76ers. And much like that game, this game had an importance greater than just this series. We t we've talked all season long about Toronto's ability to keep Kawhi Leonard after this year. We thought the hitting that game winning shot against the Sixers was an enormous step towards that. But we said the next day, but if in the next round, if they get swept, if they get if they get mm -hmm. drummed off the court, then a lot of those memories from round two will be darkened a bit by what's right. happened in round three. What's the impact of the shot now? Right, and if they lose last night, I, maybe they win game four, but they, the series is over. Yes. They are probably going to get swept, and it would have been despite Kawhi playing great. Kawhi played all these things Chris talking about were true with three minutes left in the double overtime when Milwaukee had a one point lead. Mm -hmm. They easily could have lost the game. Giannis obviously fouled out very early in that double overtime, which helped Toronto greatly. But Kawhi was in a game that I think he's going up against right now the best player currently playing. Kawhi was the best player on the court, on both ends of the court. And you mentioned he got a little more help from his starters he did, but the bench from Toronto was the same bench it's been all series. Norman Powell stepped up, he stepped up bigger than he has throughout the series. And then who is there? There's Serge, it's been one of those two guys. Mm -hmm. Van Vliet was a non-factor again, he was particularly awful. So instead of being a six-man team, they were maybe a seven-man team last night. But it was mostly Kawhi Leonard, not just the 36 points, but what Chris talked about, his defense on Giannis and Chris Middleton as well, he's matched up on some, and Middleton struggled mm -hmm. the entire game. But wouldn't you say, though, maybe they didn't get everything they've had from their bench the way they had all season long? This was much more of a complete game from a complete team than we've seen from the Raptors, at least in the postseason. And 
it, look what it took for them to beat the Bucks. It took the mm -hmm. 52 minutes of play from Kawhi Leonard on a, on a leg that may or may not be affecting him moving forward. It took 36 points. It took everything they had from everyone they had, and 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 then they just beat the Bucks. I mean. It, it feels like they've got a heavy weight on their shoulder if, if they want to duplicate this and do this again. Well, Milwaukee's the best team in the NBA throughout the regular season. So how they would react when during the regular season, these teams have a method for which they're going to win. And part of the method for Toronto was they played well when Kawhi wasn't in the lineup. They also had a tremendous bench. Nick has talked about it, how much they miss OG. Um, appendectomies kept him out of all three playoff series. And their bench has not been good. 27 points in last night's game in a double overtime, which they needed them. Right. Kyle Lowry fouls out, Powell fouls out. Like, they needed them. But they lost the bench scoring 2-1, to one, though. Because Milwaukee scores 50-something points. Yep. So it lets you know the bench didn't win this game. They did come in and play some very serviceable minutes that aren't in the stat sheet. But, man, they need an answer to Milwaukee's bench. Milwaukee, 54 points off the bench again. That's how Toronto, they're barely able to survive that. Right, it goes to double overtime despite no Milwaukee starter having more than 16 points. And despite mm -hmm. Giannis having the struggles that I know you want to get into. Were you concerned about Giannis last night? Well, I mean, he, listen, this was the worst offensive game he's played all year. One of the five worst offensive games he's played in the last two years. He He's still... Because he is such a versatile player, he puts his imprint on the game elsewhere. He gets a career high in rebounds. He was tremendous on the defensive end, but it wasn't just the 12 points. The eight turnovers were enormous, though, yes. and they are mostly live ball turnovers. They're what you're talking about, Kawhi stripping him, or Giannis, who's a good ball handler for his size, but because he's damn near seven feet tall, he still has a propensity to dribble a little too high, and he was yep. getting, before he could get into his Euro step or get into his spin move, he was having the ball knocked away from him. I'm not concerned, because I think Giannis will bounce back with an excellent game four. He had an excellent game. Game two, even though I didn't even think that was his A game. But Giannis was, Giannis, this was the worst game he's played this postseason, and offensively, the worst game he's played all year. Yeah, I have some concern, Jenna, because you don't expect a superstar, potentially the MVP, to play 44 minutes and only get 16 shots. Like, you're supposed to get more shots than that, especially on the road. I know last year we had conversations about Giannis in some of the road games. He disappeared. This year, he's been a little more consistent. But when you go on the road, you need your marquee player. You need the MVP of the league to be able to put some type of imprint on the game. No, not rebounding. No, not just defensively. But you need to be able to score the basketball. Right. They were struggling scoring the basketball. And that's why his total evolution, it's important. And that's why it's important for younger players. You need to be able to get your shot. And last night, Giannis could not get to his spot to produce the type of shots that would have led them to a victory. All right, time now for Put a Grade on It, sponsored by CarMax. All right, big night, like we said, for Kawhi Leonard. 36 points, nine boards as the Raptors were able to force a series now by winning game three. Nick, put a grade on Kawhi's night. I give him an A. The only reason he doesn't get an A plus is if he hits that game winner in single overtime, I win my Milwaukee plus three. He cost me that one. So he <laughs> He gets an A. No, he was great on both ends. He was spectacular. Best player on the court last uh, night. You got to give him an A plus, nerd. Okay, come on. Just because <laughs> you didn't get the extra credit homework. Cost me I some know. money, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Everything's costing you money. He was great. He was really great, yeah. especially with the mental part of the game. He gets nicked early. I thought it was like a muscle cramp in his quad. Goes on to play the most minutes he's ever played in the basketball game, A+. All right, take a break. Coming up, no KD, no problem for the Warriors. That is next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports channel on Series 6. And we'll be right back. Man, I feel like when you bet the dog, you should win overtime. If you have a team plus the points and it goes to overtime, automatically.